We all know that red blood cells are produced by bone marrow, but for this process to take place normally, there has to be a stimulus by a hormone which is secreted by the kidneys. And that hormone is called as erythropoietin and that hormone is required for normal erythropoiesis to take place. Welcome to Medwits Made Simple. In this video, I'll be talking about erythropoietin. If you are new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon nearby so that you'll not miss out any of my free medical lecture videos. When there is hypoxia, the kidneys have the capacity to sense it with the help of peritubular cells in the kidneys and the peritubular cells in response to hypoxia has the capacity to produce a hormone known as erythropoietin. The erythropoietin carries out various effects to counter hypoxia and this includes proliferation of erythroid series of stem cells specifically in the bone marrow and uh, it also increases hemoglobin formation it causes maturation of the precursors of red blood cells which are erythroblasts and they also enhance the release of the precursor red blood cells uh, called reticulocytes in the circulation. All these actions are towards counteracting hypoxia. Uh, let us talk about the mechanism of action of erythropoietin. When erythropoietin is secreted by the peritubular cells in the kidneys, they will act on the target cells on the erythropoietin receptors. Um, which are JAK-STAT receptors and upon activation of these receptors there will be phosphorylation of various substances present inside the target cell leading to trans activation of various transcription factors and various genetic changes taking place uh, inside the target cell and finally leading to uh, erythropoiesis to take place. So this is uh, the mechanism of action of uh, erythropoietin in a nutshell. So let us talk about recombinant erythropoietin. Recombinant erythropoietin is actually recombinant human erythropoietin which is used in the treatment of uh, um, a specific condition especially which I'll be talking about in a while. So the recombinant erythropoietin is called as epoietin and it has two isoforms epoietin alpha and epoietin beta. These two are just isoforms of, of each other so either can be used. Um, and this can be administered intravenously or subcutaneously but it has been found that in the case of erythropoietin subcutaneous route of administration is better than intravenous route of administration and lesser doses are required for subcutaneous administration rather than intravenous administration. The plasma half-life of uh, epoietin is about 6 to 10 hours but although the half-life is short uh, the, their action lasts for really several days. The uses of epoietin. So, one of the most common indications for epoietin is anemia in chronic renal failure patients. So, this is very easy to understand because uh, erythropoietin is secreted by kidneys. In renal failure patients, erythropoietin synthesis cannot take place normally. So, the anemia, the reason for anemia in those kind of patients is erythropoietin deficiency rather than iron deficiency or B12 deficiency or folic acid deficiency but who knows iron deficiency folic acid deficiency may also be present in those patients along with erythropoietin deficiency so first erythropoietin has to be administered for these patients to correct anemia but in addition to that if you suspect iron deficiency anemia iron formulations can also be administered along with erythropoietin to correct anemia in those patients so if the dosage of epoietin is about 25 to 100 units per kg of body weight subcutaneous or intravenously three times a week first of all we have to start with low dose and titrate the dose slowly uh, and increase the dose up uh, increase the dose slowly because sudden uh, high doses are found to be very uh, found to cause very adverse uh, very high adverse effects for the patients the target hematocrit value is about 30 to 36 percent and the target hemoglobin level is about 10 to 11 gram per deciliter. The principle here is that the hematocrit and hemoglobin levels should not exceed these levels and it shouldn't reach the normal level all of a sudden with, with, uh, with erythropoietin therapy. That is because sudden increase of hematocrit and hemoglobin levels will cause various adverse effects in the patients and can be associated with severe morbidity. And erythropoietin is found to be uh, found to increase the exercise uh, exercise capacity and uh, the life uh, and has found to be uh, associated with um, 
a better lifestyle outcome in the patients who are treated with erythropoietin. Other uses of erythropoietin includes anemia. It can be used in anemia developed in an AIDS patient who are treated with an antiretroviral drug called zidovudin. It can be used in cancer chemotherapy induced anemia, which is a severe anemia. And in uh, this is one of uh, an interesting uh, indication. In preoperative patients they can, uh, with anemia, they can be treated with erythropoietin to quickly replenish their iron stores, uh, uh, to, quickly, uh, uh, to, to, to quickly correct the anemia status so that the hemoglobin levels can be corrected and their blood can be uh, collected during the surgery itself and it can be administered for the patient later after the surgery. And this type of blood transfusion is called as autologous blood transfusion. Uh, so here the blood of the patient itself is collected from the patient and it is uh, administered back to the patient. So this avoids uh, uh, this avoids transfusion of blood from uh, some other person to the patient and this reduces the risk of uh, uh, or to be frank this eliminates the risk of anaphylactic reactions associated with blood transfusions because here the blood of the patient itself is administered to them. So the risk of anaphylactic reactions is uh, is practically nil. The adverse effects of uh, erythropoietin. The adverse effects are mainly due to sudden increase in hematocrit, blood viscosity, and peripheral vascular resistance if we are starting the patient with high doses of erythropoietin and if appropriate doses are not given. So that's why I've mentioned that we should start with slow, uh, low doses and slowly increase the dose of erythropoietin because if there is sudden increase in hematocrit, blood viscosity and peripheral vascular resistance, there can be various adverse effects like clot formation in uh, arteriovenous shunts. Um, the patients of chronic renal failure will usually be on dialysis. The patients on dialysis will have arteriovenous shunts, right? So uh, they are more prone to develop clot formation in arteriovenous shunts because of uh, increase in blood viscosity. There, uh, they can also develop hypertensive episodes because of a increase in peripheral vascular resistance. And there can be serious thromboembolic events which is also because of blood viscos increased blood viscosity. And they can rarely develop seizures because of any cause and they can develop flu-like symptoms. And anaphylactic reactions because of erythropoietin is very rare. The main adverse effects of erythropoietin is rather because of um, sudden increase in hematocrit, blood viscosity and peripheral uh, vascular resistance leading to these adverse effects rather than anaphylactic reactions. So we came to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, share this video to your friends and tell them to subscribe to my channel as well as if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to hit the subscribe button because so that you'll not miss out any of my medical lecture videos. I'll be making medical lecture videos on all the subjects in med school. So if I get more subscribers, I'll be making more uh, lecture videos. If you like my channel, if you want me to support my channel, you can visit this uh, link right here. The, my Patreon page, which which is the link is www.patreon.com slash medwitsmedsimple and you can donate uh, any amount if you want to um, and uh, thanks for watching uh, if you have any doubts make sure to give, uh, leave, leave your doubts in the comment section below and I'll see you in my next video